morning to everyone. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone to today's program uh, called uh, Wins Energia Ugnayan kasama si Senator Wynn Gatchalin. My name is Jess and I'll be facilitating this conversation between various groups in the energy industry and uh, Senator Wynn Gatchalin. We are joined today by the following groups. I would like to note uh, the National Association of General Managers of Electric Cooperatives or NAGMEC. Uh, we have President Alan Laniba and the representatives from electric cooperatives. We also have the BICOL Electric Cooperatives Association or BECA with their president, uh, Rodolfo Vargas. The Association of Visayas Electric Cooperatives or AVEX with their president, Virgilio Fortic. We have the Private Electric Power Operators Association of the Philippines, uh, PEPOA, which are represented. Uh, we have now with attorney, their president, attorney Renulfo Ocampo, and the chairman and president of private utilities present. Uh, we also have the Philippine Independent Power Producers Association, or PIPA, uh, and their chair president, uh, Anne Montalibano, and the chairperson, Mr. Juan Eugenio Rojas. Finally, we have uh, representatives from the Philippine Energy Efficiency Alliance, or PE2, uh, with their president, uh, Alexander Ablaza. All right, so we call on uh, Attorney Christine Sunon to give a short introduction of the senator. Uh, good morning, um, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to introduce a public servant whose impeccable work ethic and tireless dedication to serve his country made him one of the most hardworking lawmakers in the Philippines. As chairman of the Senate Committee on Energy and Committee on Economic Affairs during the 17th Congress, he steered both committees with a goal in mind to protect and empower the Filipino consumers and support small and medium businesses to generate jobs. He strove toward the passage of several key measures aimed at fostering a competitive, investor-friendly, and red tape free environment in both in the energy sector and the Philippine economy. He has successfully steered the passage of pro-consumer pro legislations that have been signed into law. Among these laws are which he authored, such as Murang Corriente Act, Electric Cooperatives Emergency and Resiliency Fund Act, Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop Act, Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, Anti-Obstruction of Power Lines Act, Philippine Innovation Act, Community-Based Monitoring Systems Act, Islamic Banking Act, and the Mobile Number Portability Act, wherein consumers now have the freedom to change their mobile numbers without the need to change the mobile service providers and subs or subscription plans. His bills under the Energy Committee, the extension of lifeline rate, subsidy, and electricity bill for low-income households had been signed into law on May 27, 2021, while the LPG Act, which aims to remove unsafe tanks from circulation, was enacted on October 14, 2021. Another bill that he authored is the Microgrid Systems Act, Indeed, his commitment to genuine public service continues to drive him in pursuing his promising vision of a better Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christine. Um, first of all, let me uh, again um, acknowledge uh, our um, guest and also uh, the um, uh, management of the different respective organizations who are with us today. Let me greet again NAGMEC, uh, National Association of General Managers, headed by President Alan uh, Laniba. Let me also greet BECA, the Bicol Electric Cooperatives Association, headed by President Rudolfo Vargas. Let me also greet Association of Visayas Electric Cooperatives, headed by President Virgilio Fortich. Let me greet uh, PEPOA, uh, headed by uh, Attorney Rani Ocampo. Let me also greet Pipa, uh, headed by uh, Attorney Ann Montelibano and uh, Chair uh, uh, Juan Eugenio Rojas. And let me also greet uh, PE2, uh, headed by President Alex Ablaza. Um, first of all, thank you very much for sharing your time with us uh, today. Um, it's really an honor to be with you 
um, today in this e-rally. Uh, this e-rally is uh, very important and meaningful to myself because uh, I personally work with all of you in different uh, legislation and different uh, issues. Um, and I'm and, and very appreciative of, um, of your uh, valuable time uh, to be with us today. And let me also take this opportunity to thank all of you for um, being a part of the Energy Committee. Uh, as I always say, the Energy Committee is not my committee. It's not the Senate com Senate's committee, but it's your committee. And thank you very much for uh, sharing your time, knowledge, wisdom, experiences all throughout these six years. Uh, we will not accomplish many, many things without your um, sincere participation. And to date, we have, in, we have enacted 11 laws uh, of national significance. And let me just share with you the 11 laws that we enacted. So these are the 11 laws, and let me just enumerate them one by one. Uh, number one is the Electric Cooperatives Emergency and Resiliency Fund Act. Number two is the Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop Law, uh, Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act, Anti-Obstruction of Power Lines Act, Murang Corriente Act, Lifeline, Lifeline Rate Extension Act, Joint Congressional Energy Commission Enhancement Act, Philippine Energy Research and Policy Institute Act, LPG Industry Regulation Act, Microgrid Systems Act, and the latest one is the Electric Vehicles Industry and Development Act. So these are the laws that we enacted this last six years. And we could not have done this without your participation and your um, unwavering support. Thank you. Thank you very much for lending us your time. I know you are very busy. A lot of you are um, very important um, personalities in your own organization and companies. And just sitting in the hearings for hours and hours, just contributing to the hearings and technical working groups for hours and hours is already something that we will truly treasure. We will not pass all these 11 laws without your unselfish participation in the committee. So thank you very much. Uh, I ask for this uh, e-rally with, with all of you to uh, solicit your support and to solicit your help this coming elections. Uh, I'm a re-electionist uh, this coming elections and uh, I'm running again uh, for a seat in the Senate. And I'm here to uh, earnestly support, earnestly ask your support and your assistance in the, in the uh, upcoming elections. One of my uh, strategies is to ask the support of the people I've worked with, because the best campaign managers or the best supporters will be the persons or the people that you have worked with, because they are witnesses to how you have worked and how you have accomplished uh, many things. So it's always been my philosophy to ask the assistance of people that I've worked with in the past. Two things that I plan when I go back to um, the Senate. Uh, number one is to continue our work to lower down electricity rates. As we all know, and for me, I've seen this fir firsthand when I go around the country campaigning, electricity rates remain to be the one of the most uh, pressing issues among our constituents. So after the enactment of the Murang Corriente Act, which we lower down electricity rates by 80 uh, centavos, uh, I, will plan, I plan to continue to look for ways and laws to lower down electricity rates. And we need the support and the cooperation of everyone in this regard. This is the first thing on my agenda. The second thing is to make sure that those 11 laws that we enacted will be implemented. I plan to uh, conduct as many oversight uh, hearings in order to fully implement those 11 laws that uh, we showed earlier. Uh, one of the most important laws there is the EVOS, uh, of which this law is meant to encourage more investors to come into the generation uh, side of the uh, power sector. Uh, it's meant to encourage more uh, supply, more investors coming in and build power plants. That being said, uh, again, I'm, I'm Coming to everyone to seek your support and uh, assistance. Uh, I know that um, uh, we still have a lot of things to do, um, especially with the cooperative sector that uh, who are here with us today. Uh, the co cooperative sector and the utility sector under uh, Attorney Rani is also facing some uh, challenges in the next 10 years. I mentioned earlier to the first group that 
um, the main issue of the uh, utilities will be the renewal of franchises. Now, out of the uh, 86, 186 uh, electric cooperatives franchises, 106 will expire in the next 10 years. That's half of the electric co-ops uh, will expire. So meaning uh, the electric co-ops will be coming to Congress in order to renew their franchise. In terms of uh, the private deals, uh, there are a few private deals uh, that their franchises will expire in the next uh, uh, six years. In my list, it's about two. Uh, one is Bohol Light and Electric Company, and the other one is the, is the uh, most uh, famous or the biggest electric utility in our company, Maralco, which is expiring in 20. 28. So the next administration will be facing with a lot of renewal of franchises, and uh, we will make sure that the renewal of franchise will, will be based on performance and most importantly, uh, consumer satisfaction. Hopefully, these last uh, six years have been, uh, have been productive for, er for everyone, and hopefully I've proven myself in the last six years by enacting uh, all of these 11 laws and solving a lot of the problems uh, plaguing the energy sector. Uh, thank you very much uh, to your support all these years. Thank you very much, Senator, uh, Senator Wynn. So we do hope that you continue to be an advocate of the energy industry in the next Congress. So at this point, we designed this uh, event to be more of a consultation, a conversation between the energy industry groups and uh, the Senate. So uh, we'd like to open the floor for questions. Uh, so first, we call on uh, Pepoa, who had some concerns on uh, the future of the Mura Corriente Act and also some uh, issues on access from LGUs. Uh, may we call on representatives from uh, Pepoa, please? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Senator Wynne. Uh, <clears throat> we appreciate your uh, calling this uh, e rally. You have uh, exerted the effort to uh, dialogue uh, with the uh, stakeholders in the power industry. In behalf of PEPOA, we support your uh, your candidacy to be re-elected to the semi. Now, uh, going to the uh, the Murang Oriente, uh, I just noted that uh, <clears throat> there there was an appropriation of a certain amount of. Uh, uh, funds uh, to fund the recovery of the stranded contract cost of PISAM. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I was just wondering if, uh, if these uh, funds that were appropriated would soon be depleted and uh, <clears throat> probably uh, after that, uh, PISAM would be again applying before the Energy Regulatory Commission to recover their uh, stranded contract cost. So uh, I am not aware uh, what is the status of this fund that will uh, pay for the stranded contract cost of PISAM. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Rani, and thank you very much for uh, the expression of support. Uh, I really enjoyed working with uh, PEPOA all these years. The Murang Corriente Act uh, eliminated the stranded cost and the stranded debts in our electricity bill. And the process for eliminating it is by using um, Malampaya funds, the proceeds from Malampaya funds to cover it. But the simple formula there is whatever PSAM needs to pay for stranded costs and stranded debts, it will get from Malampaya, not from the consumers. And that's in the law. So meaning PSAM can no longer collect from our uh, consumers for the payment of the stranded costs and stranded test. Um, however, it's really a struggle to get the full amount um, that PSAM needs. So what happens right now is if PSAM does not get the full amount, it still borrows. And the interest uh, and the borrowing cost for that, uh, for that does not go into our electricity bill. Instead, it goes to Treasury. And Treasury collects it through the General Appropriations Act. So, and that's not the spirit of the law. The spirit of the law really is to use the Malampaya proceeds so that we will not be charged whether us as consumers or us as taxpayers. But right now, it's the taxpayer side of us 
uh, that is shouldering the uh, stranded cost and the stranded debt. Moving forward, there will be no more uh, stranded cost, stranded debts in our electricity bill. It's a struggle. And that's also one of the things that I plan to do, Attorney Rani, is to make sure that the Murong Korean Act will be fully funded. It's Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Rani Ocampo from Petroa. Um, we call now the president of NAGMEC, uh, Mr. Uh, president Alan Deniba. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Jess, for the opportunity. And thank you, Senator Ruben, for inviting us in this e-rally. Unang pinasalamat ko dahil as I observe in every presidential election, this is the first time now na, na nandoon sa top five na nasali yung electricity as national concern. Usually noon magdidebate yung mga mga presidentials hindi na pag-usapan yung kuryente. Parang hindi uh, last election I, I would be frank that it was not even in the top 10 uh, national concern. Pero sa ngayon parang kung sinong susunod na presidente I think isa ito sa a lot of challenges that he will be facing and it needs a president that can comprehend the complexity of the power industry. And of course, yung presidente, hindi kasi siya yung mag-aano ng batas eh. We need a senator na kailangan maraming alam when it comes to power industry. Kasi yung crafting of laws for the president to implement will start in the legislative body. And sigurado naman kami na yung power block ay makakuha pa rin ng mga seats in Congress. And of course, Senator Wen is the counterpart in the Senate, uh, hindi pwedeng mawala ka doon sa mananalo ngayon. Uh, pero ito lang yung isa, sir, na sa amin, bias talaga kami doon. Uh, if possible, uh, it is not just a concern of electricity, but it is also on the issue on distribution of wealth when it comes to power industry, na yung sa amin lang coexistence. Yung private na nandyan na, let them exist. And then in our part also, the electric cooperative, let the electric cooperative exist and it will be owned by the people so that may long people's participations when it comes to power industry that will balance uh, everything. Kaya yung renewal ng prankesa, at least uh, nakita mo na kung ilan yung magre-renew. Uh, hopefully, itong medyo yung term nila, franchise grabbing, hindi na lang take over, franchise grabbing, ganyan. Hopefully, uh, ma-address ito. And then, isa pa, ito palang taxes ng electricity, sir. Kasi when, when we look at the power bill, nandoon generation charge times 12%. Transmission times 12%. Distribution, systems loss. It will appear that it is taxed four times, but the people are just paying one electricity. Na kung pwede, yung tax niyan is kung sa distribution lang, doon na lang. Or sa generation lang, doon na lang. Kasi makita mo talaga, it is four times na tax siya. And then at other issues on that, yung principle natin sa constitution na yung sinasabing those who are least in life shall be more in law. Kaya mayroon tayong uh, lifeline rate act na naipasa ninyo. Yung prinsipyo doon, yung pinakamahirap ay dapat hindi magbayad ng buhis. Pero by taxing the electricity na lahat ng consumers will pay the tax in this in this uh, situation the poorest of the poor who is connected to the electricity natatak siya another concern sir na hindi pa tapos ngayon and i think uh, ERC is looking into that yung oats rules yung oats rules when it comes to transmission charges na pilian ng bawat distribution utility pag tinamaan ka ng bagyo when typhoon hit the area if it is force majeure, dapat yung OTS rules na yan masuspended. Ibig sabihin sa transmission charge, ito po yun, sir. Example dito sa Southern Leyte, nung tinimaan ng audit, uh, dahil uh, yung basihan ng transmission charge is more on uh, demand. So example, uh, 10 million yung binayaran ng Suleco. Under normal condition, 100,000 consumers ang nagbabayad ng 10 million kasi demand based siya. Nang tinamaan siya ng bagyo ngayon, pag-restore niya after a month, ang na-restore lang is 20,000 consumers. 
Pero ang billing pa rin ng NGCP is still 10 million. So ang magbabayad ngayon yung 20,000 times 5 yung transmission charge niya. Kaya umabot ng 17 pesos per kilowatt hour. Ito yung sinabi ko na I'm not against of the OATS rules pero kung force majeure, dapat masuspend din yan siya at dapat aktual. Kasi ang nangyayari, na-restore nga yung kuryente mo early, ikaw yung unang na-restore, pero ikaw naman yung magbabayad ng times 5. Yung huling ma-restore, will go back to normal. Ito yung sigurong isa na uh, kailangan nating maano, dahil pinamaan talaga yung consumers. Thank you po, Senator Wingat Salian. Hindi namin malilumutan, 3-0 in the ballot sa Senate. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you, President Alan. Thank you for the expression of support as well. Uh, malaking bagay ho yan, uh, especially coming from the ECs. Uh, tama ho kayo. In fact, uh, the next administration, the next president, should have knowledge on electricity and power and energy. Um, the whole world is moving towards a different uh, paradigm. Uh, I'll give you two things that uh, is moving to a very radical paradigm. Number one is the energy transition. Uh, hindi tayo makakawala dyan. The energy, energy transition will come to our shores because financing abroad is pakonti na lang ng pakonti. And uh, the, the next administration, especially the next president, should have a uh, great appreciation on this type of transition or else mahuli tayo mamahaling kuryente natin because financing mahal. But this is a balancing act that uh, bureaucrats should study very carefully. Then number two, importation. Uh, ito nakita natin when uh, uh, the Ukraine crisis happened uh, because we import all of our coal, we import all of our oil. Uh, naramdaman natin yung pagtaas. Uh, the next administration, especially the next DOE secretary, should be serious in making our country self-sufficient in terms of energy at hindi politiko. Yung technical knowledge at meron siyang uh, energy knowledge. But, um, but uh, nevertheless, I will uh, uh, participate heavily in uh, the energy sectors. Julie noted yan. In fact, uh, uh, I know your group has sent uh, materials to us and some of the EC sent materials to us. Pinag-aaralan na namin mabuti itong OATS rules para ma-flag natin ng ERC. But thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President. Thank you, President uh, Laniba. Oh, next, we have a question from PIPA. The one they sent was regarding ancillary services. Uh, I think Attorney Anne Matribano or maybe Chairperson Juan Rojas may uh, want to ask a question. Hello. Good morning, sir. Um, thank you for inviting us. Basically, sir, um, thank you for all your hard work. Uh, you know, we have been working together ever since. And um, your, your staff, you yourself included, um, they have been very um, cooperative. And then uh, we actually appreciate um, all the all the effort that um, you have put in to listen to us and to understand exactly um, from the generator's point of view and uh, the investor's point of view, what concerns us most. To sum up, the general concern of the generators is, uh, will we be able to look forward to more laws or a conclusion of issues that resolves uh, what we consider barriers to entry? Um, as you know, uh, we, are, we would like to see a truly competitive energy sector, an energy market that's really, really competitive. And as of now, um, there are several, even with um, the EVOS is a welcome uh, mechanism for filing and, you know, for us to, to take a look of with the, our permits. But uh, it goes beyond that. Uh, we, we both know it goes beyond that. And it, it goes deep into how the energy sector um behaves as well. So we would like to see, I hope that um, in the next term, uh, we would like to see a full resolution of, of uh, several issues um, and several mechanisms that can be enacted in support of a truly uh, competitive sector. For example, sir, uh, we look forward, I think um, last year we were discussing on the AS requirements, uh, the, the CSP for the AS, and we are still waiting on that. Um, this ensures that we have uh, enough reserves in the system. I think um, this needs to be completely re-examined and followed up on 
um, to ensure that whatever we talked about during the last Senate hearings are implemented properly and executed as well. Uh, then there's, sir, I think um, the secondary price cap, uh, that's also a barrier to entry for us generators. Um, we hope that uh, we get your commitment. I think that's the question. Uh, we, we get your firm commitment that we can re-examine this as well uh, to remove this barrier to entry. And then, sir, we have our public offering issue as well. That's the interpretation of the IPIRA that's pending right now. And we have our reliability standards, your favorite mo din, sir. Plus, yung mga transmission and congestion issues that we see is a serious um, as well, a barrier uh, to entry of more generators in our area. Uh, so basically, sir, um, we would just like to see a firm commitment as well, and we look forward to working with you more um, in the next administration. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. And I thank you, Anne, to you personally, um, because you've been uh, a regular attendee of our hearings, even the technical working groups, which you know takes hours and hours of uh, discussion. But thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, for your personal uh, presence and um, contribution. And also to Pipa, who's been very, very um, active uh, in all of our hearings and um, uh, technical working groups. And also very objective in many of your um, suggestions and advices. Um, you, you know, the energy sector is a balancing act, eh? so we have to balance the different interests of everyone. No? And but but uh, all three throughout these years, I noticed that uh, PIPA has been very very balanced and uh, objective in their recommendation. So I truly appreciate that. Uh, as regards to those um, things that you mentioned, um, uh, yes, you have my commitment that we will uh, look into those deeply. Um, especially uh, the ancillary reserves. I think we put that in motion already and I believe that's beneficial also for the stability of the grid and also to encourage more uh, players to come in. Um, competition, you're absolutely correct. Uh, that's the whole point of IPIRA, uh, to make generation a competitive market. Um, but we all know it, it's uh, we're not reaching that point yet. Uh, we need to make sure that the barriers are are eliminated and reduced. Some of the powers are not being used, for example, in terms of the uh, indigenous people's um, IPRA process. Uh, those, uh, those, those, that pro entire provision has not been implemented at all, actually. You know, and some of the powers that we give, we gave DOE, for example, for um, yung, yung, um, prior approval powers, they're not using that also. So in, in, in short, EVOS is not being fully realized. And that's why I said earlier that part of my agenda is to conduct as many oversight as possible so that we see the laws uh, are properly implemented. So yes, you have my commitment. Uh, rest assured that we will uh, make sure that the GENCOs um, uh, are competitive. We will attract more players to come in and to make sure that supply keeps on uh, keeps on uh, adding throughout the next few years. No? So uh, that's the job of government, man. And you have my commitment to, to make the environment conducive. So thank you, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Um, it it warms my heart to hear that. And then, uh, you know, you have uh, you have our support in terms of knowledge as well and an opinion. Uh, I know personally that uh, I hope that we can look forward to a reserves or a derivatives market because that I think you know pinag-usapan din natin dante. Yeah. So, you know, those, those things and dami naming wish list, I'm so sorry, but I, I do know you understand that, you know, we all work towards one common goal is to make sure that we have energy security and reliability. And that can only be achieved um, if all the factors are present. And speaking of Evo, sir, I guess next admin, uh, we're just waiting for the next uh, Steercom chair as well. So, you know, I mean, we look forward to something that can be executed properly already. And so we can complete the real vision and purpose of the EVO, sir. Uh, with all, I think uh, Johnny messaged me. He also wants to say a few words for you. So, Johnny, are you there? I will turn it over yes, to yes. Mike. Um, um, thank you. Thank you, Ann. Uh, Sen Senator Wynn, uh, maraming salamat uh, for inviting us uh, on behalf of uh, the member generators of PIPA. We would like to thank you and, and your committee over the past years 
kasi palagi ho kaming uh, present no palagi ho kaming iniimbita sa mga uh, hearings no and uh, i can just say that um, i think we haven't seen a more active uh, uh, chairman of the committee on energy in in you sir no and uh, we can only hope sir that uh, kayo pa rin po yung magiging chairman ng uh, Committee on Energy. Sana wag niyo po kaming pabayaan, uh, Senator Wynn. No? Um, we hope that you will still be the chairman in, in the next Congress so that uh, we can continue to work together. Sabi na po ni Ann, yung mga pinagtrabahoan natin in the past. And uh, makakaasa po kayo, sir, uh, sa aming uh, suporta sa inyong uh, committee and your advocacies uh, in the energy sector. So again, on behalf of the member generators of PIPA, maraming maraming salamat, uh, Senator Gatchanya. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for the kind words. And Johnny, get your wish list ready no? because uh, ilang tulogan na lang. We have a new administration, uh, definitely a new energy secretary. So um, uh, those, uh, the wish list is very important to start off. Kasi we have a lot of, marami tayo natapos, but we still have a lot of things to do. So, so, but thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Salamat. Thank you, sir. Thank you again to Attorney Montalibano and Mr. Rojas of IPA. We now call on Mr. Alexander Ablaza from PE2 who has several questions regarding uh, investments and the IAEECC. Uh, Mr. Ablaza. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jess. And uh, good morning, uh, Senator Wynn. It's been a long journey since the 17th Congress. Uh, your active push for energy efficiency legislation is a something very, very, very new that a traditional lawmaker will probably not understand. And it was this uh, out-of-the-box thinking and very progressive energy transition mindset that actually uh, made the energy efficiency law a, a, a reality, breaking the 29-year gap that uh, we did not have an energy efficiency or energy conservation law. You, as senator, as, uh, the, uh, as a principal author of the law, you understood that energy efficiency is a distinct investment asset class at hindi lang practice or behavior lang. You, you understood that energy efficiency is a primary resource. You have that economic uh, mindset that uh, made you understand that uh, energy efficiency is a primary resource and an infrastructure project type. You even uh, took us as a resource person, and one of the recommendations was even to rename JCPC to JCEC because there are you know, more than 50% of the energy is actually outside the power sector. No, the, the fuels, the oils, the, the other fossil and, and direct consumption of industry, for example, of other fossil fuels in the transport sector. But the JCEC, hoping, we are hoping that you would continue to chair the uh, Committee on Energy uh, in, in the 19th uh, Congress. But the, the questions we raise is the JCEC, uh, through the next Congress, we'll have to see what, what can be done to protect the longer term 10 to 25 year investment windows. Kasi pag naglagay ang local or foreign investor ng 10 to 25 year uh, capital uh, outlay for a portfolio of projects, it has to be protected against the three year SIPP review cycles of the CREATE law. Kasi ano eh, na, na, napakakitid eh. So, you know, every three years, you're nervous about them cutting it of course, we are protected under the law, RA 11285, uh, at least 10 years that we be granted incentives. But uh, keep in mind, Senator, uh, naka third anniversary na tayo, so we have seven years remaining <laughs> na wala pang guidelines actually. Through no fault of BOI naman, they're still working on the SIPP framework. So that uh, the, the, rema the remainder of the 10 years is getting shorter and shorter. Then the second uh, issue is the itong, uh, very beautiful uh, creation uh, of the Interagency Energy Efficiency and Conservation Committee. Will its policy directions be sufficient to enable innovative procurement, contracting, uh, you multi-year contracting, and financing modalities for energy efficiency projects uh, uh, in the public sector? No? or will follow through legislation be required to remove the existing policy barriers? And we're talking of 
direct procurement of ESCO performance contracts by government entities. Uh, do we need to amend uh, Republic Act uh, 9184 or the GPRA? Do we need to amend the BOT law? Uh, do we need to do we need NEDA to amend the JV guidelines to make them all suitable towards uh, energy efficiency uh, projects in the long run? So those are very heavy uh, questions, but uh, it all boils down to PE2 hopes that you continue to uh, chair the Energy Committee through the 19th Congress uh, because uh, these, are, uh, these are critical issues that uh, the, the committee will have to look at or the JCEC will have to look at uh, in the next Congress. So thank you very much, uh, Senator Nguyen. These are, you, 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 you have the support of the energy efficiency sector, especially through PE2. Thank you, thank you, Alex. Um, I should be the one thanking you for, for really, uh, pushing and uh, no, lobbying very hard to get this law going. You know how old this law is. This law has, was uh, submitted to Congress more than 10 years ago. And uh, you opened our eyes on the importance of this law, not only as a practice, but also as a technology. And um, uh, I just shepherded it you know, all the way to the end. But you're absolutely correct. You know, um, in the past, when you say energy efficiency, it's behavioral. Eh? And go go government always pleading na magtipid tayo, pleading that we don't consume electricity. But we all know that people don't, they don't listen, basically. Nung pag sinama mo magtipid, wala naman nakikinig eh. So it's really now uh, the use of technology that's uh, uh, important. What I'm saying is, uh, energy efficiency is technology driven eh? and that's what that's what I saw in uh, Germany um, and energy efficiency is a is a mechanism to decouple consumption and, and, and GDP growth and economic growth and that's what they did also by uh, making the energy sector very efficient. The good news is uh, the law is in being implemented. Um, I saw the statistics about 80% of the provisions of the law uh, has been implemented, uh, but we need to keep on pushing so that we will feel the full effects of the law in terms of efficiency and reduce consumption. So with that, um, Alex, you have um, my commitment to situate that uh, the, the law is felt um, the entire country, not only by changing behaviors, but really putting processes using technology and even warm bodies, no? because in the law, uh, companies are prescribed to uh, hire warm bodies. Uh, you have my commitment and thank you. Thank you very much for guiding us. I, I really admit that uh, initially uh, my, I, my knowledge on energy efficiency is not as um, uh, deep, but you uh, patiently guided us and then taught us the importance of these technologies more so now no? because of the uh, um, European crisis more so that we see the need and the importance of this law and we need to keep on pushing to implement it implementation na lang to eh. so we need to do it no? thank you well, thank, thank you senator win thank you uh thank you uh, mr Blaza, a representative from uh, pe2 we would also like to read a personal comment we received from mr bustamante of uh, Lueco. His personal comments is electricity consumed. Again, since LGUs are now allowed to collect RPT and business tax from distribution utilities, may be a revisit of the distribution of one centavo per kilowatt hour being provided by generation companies to host city, municipalities, province, region, and barangay. Perhaps the distribution may be allocated only to municipality, city, or barangay and province where the plant is located. The rest of the fund may be allocated to Kisong for missionary projects. It is up to the authorities to decide on the percent of the distribution. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bustamante. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take note of this and maybe reach out to you in the future to get more details. Also, sir, we have uh, from PE2, what do you foresee will happen to Malampaya and, other, and our natural gas industries? I believe you filed a bill on midstream natural gas. Yeah, well, it's inevitable that Malampaya will run out. So, Terry, and um, we have only two options um, to import, uh, which is the fastest way to uh, bring in natural gas. But again, importation will uh, make us susceptible to global price shocks. 
And this is something that we need to address also moving forward, um, how to address price shocks, of course, from the consumer side and also from the power plant side. The other one is uh, to explore more. You know? um, um, we need to continue to explore uh, everywhere and encourage big companies to come in. The viable areas, not all of them are in the contested areas. There's some viable areas outside of the contested areas that we can explore already. Within the contested areas, it's a balancing act. Uh, my personal opinion is we need to explore also, but we need to balance also that so that it will not create uh, any um, adverse geopolitical effects. No? Yes, we need to explore more inside and outside of the contested areas. And we need to jumpstart our importation because Malampaya is already like running out. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can either send us to the chat. And if you have further questions after this, uh, we'll take note of it. And uh, hopefully, you can reach out to you later at a later time for uh, a more deeper discussion. From, from people. Uh, <coughs> a, um, uh, just wanted to... Uh, a member was asking, uh, there was an attempt before to reorganize the ERC, the Energy Regulatory Commission, but uh, has not pushed through, no? And the PIPOA member is, a PIPOA member is asking uh, because they're concerned about the backlog of cases at the ERC and what can be the solution to this. Thank, Thank you. you, Attorney Rani. You're, you're absolutely correct. No? The lower house filed several bills to reorganize ERC. I think some of the salient points, if I'm not mistaken, will be adding more commissioners, uh, dividing it into different geographical areas. My take on that, my personal take on that, the, there are two things that we need to fix there. No? First is the governance side, uh, making sure that there are the, the check and balance uh, within the organization is functioning. And then number two is also efficiency. Uh, efficiency is a function of budget. Uh, the more budget we will put, the more people they can hire. And also pushing them to automate. No? Um, uh, in fairness to ERC, after the pandemic, they've um, realized that automation is an essential part of their um, process. So they've automated a lot of their processes. How much do they really need to make themselves more efficient and to dispose the cases as quick as possible? And then number two, uh, we look at it, look at into the governance side of the of the uh, of regulator. Look, we look at uh, those two things: governance and efficiency. Thank you, thank but, you. Sir. But you're right, uh, Tony. Uh, I think the house was spearheading that reorganization. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Attorney Acampo from Pepoa. So now we move on to uh, the message. I'd like to ask representatives from. Uh, the groups that we have here, if they ha if you want to read your message to, for the senator, so we would start with uh, Becca, uh, Becca's president, Mr. Rodolfo Vargas, has sent us his message. Uh, I quote: "I, Rodolfo B. Vargas, declares my unequivocal support for the re-election of the Honorable Senator Sherwin Gachalian. I am expressing this statement of support in my capacity as president of the Beacon Electric Cooperatives Association." and as Board of Director President of First Catanduanes Electric Cooperative. As Senator, he showed unwavering support to the goals, projects, and programs of rural electrification and entirely manifested his efforts to delay, if not totally stop, the advances of the Beacon Light against electric cooperatives in the Beacon region. Senator Gachalian has been very consistent in his crusade to implement various projects for rural electrification and empower the electric cooperatives for better service. A vote for Senator Wingachalian is a vote for stronger electric cooperatives. We now on call for the president of the Association of Visayas Electric Cooperatives, President Virgil de Fortic, uh, to share your message for the senator. In behalf of the Association of Visayas Electric Cooperatives President, GM Virgilio C. Fortich Jr., let me re his message. The Association of Visayas Electric Cooperative, or AVEC, statement of support to Senator Sherwin P. Gachalian. In the last few days leading to the day when we are to cast our votes in the ballots, aspiring candidates promise us the desires of our hearts in exchange for our support for them. Although we do not have the element 
so-called Black Vote, are closely knitted organization of 31 electric cooperatives from the island of Visayas makes our endorsement a significant one, an endorsement that can easily affect the results of the national and local elections. Of the many candidates, whether new or old ones, who are promising to be our voice in the government once they got elected, one familiar name and a trusted ally stood up from the rest of the aspirants especially when it comes to energy matters. Senator Sherwin Wynn T. Gachalian. Senator Wynn is the ideal and perfect example of a legislator and statesman whose time in the legislative arena made milestones and milestones on top of each other. While everyone else promises they are going to do this to accomplish that, or promote our welfare and interest to get our support, Senator Wynn did not need to do any of those political bubbles because his accomplishments and performance in the 17th and 18th Congress, especially what he has done for the energy sector in the legislative and policy making arena, is nothing short of outstanding and perhaps one that can be awarded with flying colors. True to his advocacy of protecting and empowering the Filipino consumers, of fostering a competitive, investor-friendly, and red tape-free environment in the energy sector, and of sparkling economic renaissance by crafting measures that would promote robust competition, encourage investments, and make doing business in the Philippines easier. He was able to conduct fruitful and productive hearings and investigations leading to the passage of the following significant laws. RA-112234 or the Energy Virtual One-Stop Shop Act. RA-112285 or the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Act. RA-11371 or the Murang Corriente Act. RA-11572 or the Philippine Energy Research and Policy Institute Act. RA-11646 or the Microgrid System Act. These pieces of legislation are of vital importance, not just to the rural electrification sector, but to the entire energy industry and even to the society in general. The Association of Visayas Electric Cooperatives bears witness to your commitment that you will be our voice in the Senate, that you will protect our franchises and not politicize its renewal, and that you will continue to champion our causes and protect our welfare as you would protect the interests of the Filipino people. For everything else that you aim to accomplish further as you aspire to be a senator of the Republic once again, you will have the support of our association and all our friends in the sector. Together with all the members of AVIC, we express our full support of your desire to continue serving the Filipino people and hopefully help the electric cooperatives become better and better at what we are mandated to do. Mabuhay ka, Senator Win. Amping sa kanunay. Thank you. Again, salamat, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, the statement of support um, to AVIC and also to Becca, who also uh, expressed their support. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, uh, representatives from AVEC. Uh, we now call on again uh, Attorney Rani Ocampo if you have further message for uh, the senator, uh, for Pepoa. Thank you. We appreciate the good senator in uh, taking this time to uh, hold a e-rally and dialogue with the industry players. And that uh, as shown in the past six years, he has uh, demonstrated to, uh, his uh, commitment to uh, show his concern uh, to the uh, uh, various players of this uh, industry and that uh, exerted efforts to understand the uh, dynamics of the uh, power industry. And for this, we appreciate uh, his effort in coming out with bills that are well-balanced and does not uh, compromise the interests of any of the uh, stakeholders. And uh, for this, uh, in behalf of PEPOA, we express our unqualified support and endorse his uh, candidacy for the uh, Senate. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Attorney Rani. And thank you also for your time. I I know you and uh, Attorney Ann has been super uh, cooperative uh, to the committee, lending your precious time and your uh, knowledge to us. Uh, we really appreciate that. That's why 
a lot of our bills, actually all of our bills are balanced because of your um, honesty and your balanced recommendations as well. No? Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Attorney Rani. I'd like to call on Mr. Alexander Ablaza of PUP. So um, thank you. You have the support of the energy efficiency uh, industry uh, represented today by the Philippine Energy Efficiency Alliance. We really hope that the new uh, Senate uh, leadership uh, will assign you the uh, Energy Committee post uh, once again. So again, uh, we, we support you, Senator Wynn, and uh, PE2 is uh, behind you uh, in, as, as we com commonly see the energy efficiency goals of this country. Thank you again, Alex, and thank you for uh, your time and also for for lobbying very hard i really have to thank you because i know i know your your frustrations and your um, hard work in putting this law uh into play and um i really thank you and you're right no i i'm, I'm with you in terms of making uh, energy efficiency mainstream to reduce uh importation of oil importation of coal and others no and uh, we have the law now so all we need to do is to make sure that it's implemented very good. Thank, thank, you. thank you. So with that, thank you very much, Mr. Ablaza. With that, we have uh, all of our organizations. Uh, we are nearing the end. Uh, with this, we'd like to we'd just like to ask for a photo opportunity with everyone who are still in uh, the meeting. We may request everyone to turn on their cameras and we'll have our colleagues get a photo. Thank you very much to everyone, uh, sir. Uh, do you have any final words for everyone in the in the call? Yeah, Th thank you again to everyone. I'm looking uh, forward again working with uh, everyone uh, in the in the new Congress. And um, thank you for helping me pass those eleven laws. I I don't think I can do that without the contribution of um, all of our resource persons, especially your expertise. I don't claim to be an expert in the energy sector. You are the expert. You know the technicalities and the nuances and you uh, lent those to the Committee on Energy. And like I said, um, if ever given a chance to go back again to the Senate, we will focus, continue our quest and focus to lower down electricity rates, uh, continue our oversight so that uh, all of those laws will be implemented properly. And uh, rest assured that uh, my principle on fairness uh, in the committee will be uh, upheld constantly. So thank you very much. Maraming maraming salamat po. With that, we have come to the end of today's program. We thank NAGMEC, Becca, AVEX, PIPA, PEPOA, and PE2 for your participation to today's event. Thank you very much.